Yeah, man, for sure. Where are we going? Okay, pay attention. Cool. Mom's in jail. Gangster. Carl was fired. Oh, large man. We're chasing the storm. Cool. Don't tell Lillian. Wait, wait. Lillian is like here. Lewis? So we're going to chase a storm. You have no idea what you're doing. I have a plan. Oh, so we're just gonna follow Carl's plan. Yeah, we yeah. are. Oh, well, well, you film everything. This is ridiculous. What are you guys, like storm chasers or something? Yes, and we're gonna be late if we don't get back on the road. Why'd you come back? Take care of Sam and Carl, really. I can't find Carl. Let me show you we are here. Well, I don't know where we are, but my bet is that Carl is right. Give me the keys. Have to get them for me first. Well, it's normal for families be worried about each other. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe not this much. Carl! Look at me in the eye when you talk to me, son. The only people who don't look you in the eye when you're talking? Criminals? Psychopath. You do not care about the storm. All you do is control me. Control you? All I do is try and make you happy. I hope you uh, find what you're looking for. Second, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Luz Cabrales, and this is Desiree with me. Go right. Uh, sorry, uh, my name is Luz Cabrales, and I'm from Scranton Films. Desiree. Hi, my name is Desiree Zlinski. I'm with NEPA Film Society. And today we are with Hannah Black and Megan Peterson. Thank you, girls, for uh, joining us. They are the. Uh, I think we have a writer and director as well from uh, Drought, and they also are in the film. Uh, so wh why don't we start with that, uh, Hannah and uh, Megan, if you want to introduce yourself and just sort of what, uh, what we're here for today. 
Sure. I'm Megan Peterson, and I am a co-creator, co-director, producer, and actor in the film Drought, uh, which you just saw the trailer for. And here's my partner in crime, Hannah Black. Hi, I'm Hannah Black. <laughs> I almost started slating. I was like, Hannah Black, five, six. Um, I'm Hannah Black. I am the writer, uh, co-director, co-producer, and I play Sam in the film. Um, yeah. So we did a couple things. Yeah. And uh, again, thank you for being here. Uh, um, for those who don't know, Desiree and I are uh, had teamed up to do the Independent Filmmakers uh, Creative Hub. What that means is that we're going to have Scranton Talks, which is this today, uh, where we invite filmmakers from all over the U.S. and maybe the world, who knows, uh, where we're going to be talking about how to make films in small towns. These girls right here that you see, uh, you've seen Drought, that's the trailer, is now playing on Amazon Prime, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But we're going to have just a small talk about what it is uh, that you, you know, filmmakers can do to make their dreams happen of making films uh, in small towns. And Desiree and I are all about independent filmmaking, and um, she could tell you a little bit more about what we do as far as uh, having in working with uh in collaborating with filmmakers in the area so they can make films wherever they live so maybe talk a little bit more about that and what our independent hub is all about oh yeah so we're loose and i as she just said we teamed up to form the independent film creative hub um, i'm with the nipa film society it's a small group here for northeast pa to bring the filmmakers in the area involved as we've seen in Northeast PA, I'm sure you've seen in Wilmington, that there is a solid talent of filmmakers here in the area to bring together and to just collaborate with each other and um, get on projects together and bring film into our respective cities and states because there is some great work that's being made. Yeah, and um, if maybe we can start with uh, Megan, just tell us more about how this project came about, uh, how, uh, I mean, you seem to be very, very good friends, uh, so that's a plus. Uh, if you just maybe uh, tell us more about that. Sure. Um, well, Hannah and I, yes, we are very good friends. I'd say best friends, if you can have best friends in your 30s. Um, we met in an acting class called uh, Meisner Technique. It was a two-year program, and there we started creating short films with that small group of people. There are only uh, six total students and our acting coach. And we realized through that, that we really enjoyed making things together and that our voices were important mm -hmm. and we had stories that we could share with the world. So then Hannah brings me this idea for drought. Um, and when she did, I was like, Hannah, this is bigger than a short film, which is all we were familiar with. This story is, is definitely like a feature link we had no idea what we were doing. We right. did not go to film school. And, you know, the short films that we made were wonderful, but they technically weren't complex or anything like that. And we knew this was going to be a lot more complex to do. But we took it on anyways. <laughs> well, that's good. Maybe uh, can you talk about the process of coming up with the, the like the idea? I see that you say you've been doing like short films. Uh, you girls are actresses as well, right? Yeah. Okay. So maybe yeah. talk about what you did prior to Drought and then um, just as far as writing it, uh, you know, Hannah, in that sense, just what, what brought you to writing something that, that really has, I mean, is a great story and it touches on a lot of subjects that many people go through in small towns. And also we have, uh, you know, the issue of, you know, having to, to deal with, uh, you know, making a film, you know, in a small town. Uh, have you had any experience um, trying to send your uh, your scripts somewhere else? Or like uh, maybe a little bit more about that. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, Megan and I, as far as I'll start with our short film experience was also very minimal. We, in our two-year Meisner program, part of that was making two short films after each year um, with our class. And so we all, you know, would write the scenes together and then just shoot it all together. Um, and so we did two of those. And then once we graduated, we did one solo, Megan and I did. 
And then after that, that's when drought came to be. So really, I mean, our amount of experience with even making short films was incredibly small. So then when we started doing drought, again, didn't go to film school or school for writing screenplays. We just read Save the Cat. Um, and if you guys are familiar with that book or anyone out there, if you're not familiar with that book, it's a great um, starting place because it really just gives you the formula on how to write a screenplay, how to break it down because it feels very big thinking about how to do that. And it is, but the way they break it down, it's very manageable. And so we meet every Tuesday night and we do these note cards for each scene, for each act. I'd go home, I'd write five pages a day, send it to Megan. Megan would look over it. We would discuss things that needed to change, et cetera. And then by the end of that first month, we had our first draft. And then for about two and a half years, we went on to continue to polish that or re I'll just say rewrite it like seven or eight times. Um, wow. Cause again, we didn't know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's typical just for any sort of process for writing a movie. We'll find out for our next one if that's just our process, but I hope not because that's a lot of traps, but, um, but yeah. And so, so as far as sending the script, um, because we do come from a small town, we didn't have any connections. We didn't know what to do. And so we decided to write like a companion or not write, but shoot a companion short um, to kind of pitch to investors because that's the only thing that we really had heard was a possibility until we found the Seed and Spark Hometown Heroes Rally. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the most intimidating part was coming up with like a budget for shooting this film. We right. didn't know, we didn't even know what a line producer was, much less know anyone who did line producing. We um, were so naive and I think being naive was part of the magic of it because we didn't know you know how difficult things could be we just went into it doing the thing and um like Hannah said we just knew people talked about getting investors we didn't right. know where these investors were going to come from but we knew we had to start with getting like something together to pitch to them mm -hmm. to get their interest in in the film um and so that's where we were started. And like Hannah said, she sent me a text message with a no film school article. And it just had 13 exclamation marks. And it said, Mark and Jay Duplass want to executive produce your next movie. <laughs> well, um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so what um, the seed and spark um, for those who are not um, familiar with it. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Just what they it is are, as far as Yeah, they, sure. There's they're a crowdfunding platform for artists. When we first found the platform, it was just a crowdfunding platform for filmmakers and now they've expanded to any kind of creators, comic books or novels or any kind of, of art. And you they help you so much with education on how to crowdfund. Um, and also they run different contests throughout the year. And I think just like how we've connected, they build a really great community with filmmakers from across the country. And, and how was that experience? I mean, so then now you have something that you submitted, your crowdfunding, and then you see this article. Uh, and um, I mean, that was in se itself uh, a process, uh, I bet. Uh, so as far as uh, you, you ended up winning. You were one of the filmmakers. Uh, I'm not sure how many were there. I think there were like maybe like two or three. Was two? it two? Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. So th that's really, really good. And uh, you won about uh, $25,000. Now you just didn't win the money. Like you had to finish the film, right? Like, like, so maybe like, uh, cause a lot of people get confused uh, on the fact that it's like, okay, so now I have this grant. Now I have this, but we're all about, okay, now you have it. Now you got to finish it. Uh, finish maybe it. a little bit about the process on that. Now that you have a little bit of funding, do you have to get more, like to get your, you know, your film um, budget funded? Yeah. yeah, we, um. so in that competition, we, Megan and I, we raised 20, a little under $25,000. 
And then we received our $25,000 no interest loan from Mark and JD Plus. Um, and so that was a grand total of $50,000. And that was what we used to make the movie. Um, that was our budget. That was all that we had. Um, and so we were prepared. We knew that it would be like a micro budget film. But again, I think the beauty of making a movie where you live in your hometown, you, you have a lot of materials or um, things. Like relationships. Yeah, like relationships. Yeah. 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 That can really, um, that want to invest and help you make this film that I, I'm sure maybe you get in LA or New York or Atlanta. I don't really know, right. but there is something about a small town, you know, where everyone wants to pitch in and help. So yes, her budget was very small, but we had a lot of people that wanted to come on board and help in other ways besides financially. So that was, again, make a movie where you live. It's awesome. Yeah, and I think, uh, Desiree, I think you had a question about resources and just finding that through, uh, through like, like they said, relationships. Yeah, I mean, I think Luce and I are always all about filming in Scranton, Pennsylvania and in the surrounding areas, because there's just an abundance of resources here. And I'm sure in Wilmington, um, if you want to explain how it was like trying to find your crew and your cast in Wilmington and what kind of you help support Wilmington. And it's, I know with um, LA and New York, maybe it seems, seems like they're like, oh, not another production in my neighborhood. But like in Scranton, I think we had a film, a pretty big film called The Virtuoso with Anthony Hopkins film up here. Um, they blew up an RV in Wyoming Avenue a couple like two years ago which is pretty cool but um it's just like it seems like people are like yeah I want to help well this is exciting what's going on here so it seems like there's a lot of enthusiasm when something a production of a movie comes to a smaller town but if you want to elaborate on how you found your cast your crew and um, what you used in Wilmington yeah we um the first thing we did was I think Hannah if I if I remember right is tried to find locations right we needed the places to shoot it before we could cast up and crew up and that was me and Hannah driving around in my SUV and just going up to these locations and chatting with them about what our story was about and you know the heart behind what we were making which I think is what um attracted a lot of people to the project they would hear you know the synopsis of the story and let us know it was similar to their own in some way they felt a connection with it and they wanted to be on board and we would let them know the embarrassing small amount of money we could offer them for using their location or for example a, a man who owned an automotive place that had old cars and we're, we're just driving and we see old cars and we're like, let's pull in there. And we right. pull in there and ask about using his cars for picture cars, things like that. And so once we found all of that, we were kind of getting more and more ready for production when we found our cinematographer, Brad Walker at Lighthouse Films, which is a production company in town. They generally focus on commercials, but also want to be in the narrative Space too. So we talked to him for a while. I don't know if you want to give details about the casting or the crewing up, kind of. We didn't know any crew because on our own films, we just held the boom mic if you weren't in the scene. So <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> and, and probably didn't hold it very well. There's <laughs> yeah, you got to hold it at, at a certain angle or else you're not getting any audio, right? <laughs> I tell you, boom mic, man, that's, that's some hard stuff. For real. Um, yeah. So once we got Brad Walker on board, um, he really helped us crew up as well as Michelle Roca, who it, um, works at Lighthouse as well. They really helped us find the crew that we needed. When we talked with Brad, we we're like, hey, listen, we don't need the most qualified like person for right. each role. We want the kindest person for each role because that was something that was really really important to us we wanted a really sweet set um where everyone's just working together 
um, to make it happen. Not everybody, because Megan and I definitely were not qualified to be directors or the lead actors or any of those things. We had never done any of that before. And so we felt the same way as far as bringing on crew. We just wanted the people that wanted the best for the project and, and being kind along the way. So he really helped us find those people. Um, and then Megan and I, what were you going to say? Megan? I just had a, I just had a random <laughs> a memory to share about crew before you talk about cast. Yes, please do. We found one crew member because we were posting on Craigslist yes. to try to get an ice cream truck because oh. we did not have an ice cream truck. And we were trying every means you could think of to find one. Mm-hmm. And we posted out on Craigslist, a movie is being filmed in Wilmington. We need your ice cream truck. And this, guy named John Knutson who had just moved to town was like I don't know what this is but I gotta meet these people who are trying to make a movie with an ice cream truck and so sometimes you also come about people in a really random fashion so that's how we found our gaffer through a vehicle ad which is perfect because someone who like sees a Craigslist ad and is like I want in on that we're like okay you're a person (laughs) there we go (laughs) it was great so yeah so crew for the most part but we did have some fun little things like that or our second AC um came on board and I hadn't seen this person since I was in elementary school like second grade and I was like we went to elementary school together he was like yeah we did I mean just funny stuff like that um but as far as cast goes Megan and I also cast the film (laughs) so because why not right yeah exactly (laughs) We have Why some not? really talented folks here in Wilmington. We felt more comfortable in that realm because we are actors first. So it was it was fun and it was nice to be on the other side of the camera for once, like having actors come in and audition. For a couple of roles, we did do nationwide searches, um, specifically for the role of Carl, who's the lead, because we wanted to cast authentically. We wanted an actor who was on the autism spectrum. And so, and he also needed to be, to look like Megan and I, because we were all going to play siblings. Right. So we knew that that was going to be just a little more, well, we thought more tricky to find, but um, it turns out, I mean, we had a ton of amazing actors audition for this role in particular. And we are so impressed, but the best actor for the role lives in Wilmington, which felt too good to be true. So we had him come back for multiple callbacks because we were like, there's no way. Things don't work out like this for us, um, but it just did. Um, and so, so casting was really, really fun and everyone ended up just being local to Wilmington. Um, Because like you guys are saying, there's so much talent outside of Atlanta and LA and New York. And there's so much talent in those places for sure. But the best roles, at least for our film, were right here. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes that works even better. Uh, Because again, like you're saying, you got to have sort of a family on set. Because if you don't have that, uh, you know, relationship that you're having fun, you know, because I think it should be about having fun uh, and being professional. But if you're not having fun, I mean, then it's not, you know, um, the, the production value is, is not there either. Uh, it's not and about you're like spending long amounts of hours with each other. So. <laughs> In very hot conditions. So, <laughs> so yeah. we'll talk about weather, right? Uh, okay. So when we were following, yeah. now that you talk about hot conditions, uh, there's always something that happens on set. There's always a setback. There's always something. So maybe uh, you can, you know, most people talk about, you know, oh, yeah, we had this, we had that. But you girls had something bigger. Maybe you can tell us about that. Yes, because what's so funny, I'll tell you, is that we had all the, like, typical things. Like our grip truck got stuck in the sand. Our ice cream truck broke down. Uh, so, And we rarely ever talk about those challenges because they were all you know, I guess overshadowed by the fact that this film is about no rain. And on day 12 of production, we had to stop everything because a hurricane four, or hurricane, a category four hurricane, I mean, was headed towards Wilmington and not moving. I mean, it was coming right towards our city. 
So we had to stop on day 12 of an 18 day shoot and everyone evacuated to places like Charlotte or Atlanta. Um, and we were stuck outside of our town for two weeks and didn't know what we were going to come to when we came back because Wilmington essentially became an island. It flooded everywhere. We weren't sure if our locations were going to be okay. Um, and not even just for our films, but because those people became our family too. And we didn't want their businesses to be damaged. So it was a lot. And, um, I was also going out of the country during that time. So amazing Hannah somehow put the Tetris of our uh, cruise schedule back together and everyone was able to come back two months later to film. But then it was 44 degrees. Oh, okay. (laughs) So, uh, so one question about that. I mean, so when you have something like that, a setback, it's very hard on your uh, motivation, right? It's very hard because now you're like, what am I going to do? And uh, it takes a toll, especially if you're an artist, you're trying to create something that's meaningful. And now you have a big setback. Uh, How do you bounce back from that uh, emotionally? You know, just say, you know, I got to just keep doing it, keep doing it. Besides that, you have the responsibility of finishing, but just more um, in the sense of like a personal, you know, uh, note. Good question. (laughs) Hey, I made you think. That's okay. Like, how did we do that? I think um, part of it is just we had invested so much already. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and I think we could say just ourselves invested, but then when we look at our crew and our cast and all the people that contributed to this crowdfunding campaign and shared our film, um, like when we were doing our campaign, it's like, it didn't feel like it was our movie. It felt like it was our community's movie. And so it had to we had to finish it. We had to keep on going, even though we were tired because not only us, but so many people poured their heart and soul into making this happen. And it just, um, it just wasn't really an option to be like, well, you know, we tried our best and we hit a lot. I mean, a hurricane was big, but we also hit some equally challenging things during that production after production before production that just a lot of life stuff hard stuff um in between and so it's kind of like I don't know we just kind of had to I think also because we're a partnership so when one person is tired the other person can lift them up and vice versa Megan what do you think yeah the thing I was thinking of is a lot of times those setbacks uh, I think we used as motivation to be like this will not stop us. And it almost made us get more fire. Every once in a while it gets to you. And I think that that's when it's okay to call up your, your friend or like I got to just call up Hannah. And sometimes we're like, I can't do it today. Like today I take a break from the movie. Um, Because movies are, they can be at least a nonstop thing you're working on. You can really, um, get burnt out on it and the thing we didn't want to do is get so tired that we made a wrong decision out of just because we felt tired so the process of making the movie took longer than I think some do but a lot of that is in part because we allowed ourselves to take a breath if we needed it yeah and that's extremely important I mean you pretty much said it like you have to step back and you know do something fun relax and then come back to it, right? Uh, yeah, and I mean, not that, feel guilty. Uh, not feel guilty, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I mean, I was going to ask you about what your advice for uh, filmmakers was, but uh, I think that sums it up. But let me make sure Desiree doesn't have another question, and then I'll ask my final question, let you girls go. We'll uh, just uh, show the trailer one more time, do a little plug for uh, Amazon Prime, because I know that is... Uh, is on Amazon Prime and then go from there. All right. And uh, I'll check well um, also if we have any questions on our uh, site. Okay. Um, no, I just right. want to go bring ahead. up, I was um, exploring your um, social media and I was interested because you put on your Facebook, our hopes, raise autism awareness. 
bring jobs to our community, provide opportunities for women in film, if you wanted to elaborate on those. Yeah, um, I think it was really cool. We were able to uh, pay our crew uh, and we were really proud of that. It wasn't a huge amount, but we were also able to um, give them an interest in the film. So once the film makes money, um, our, our hope is that it does because we don't have investors. It is our crew and our cast and we can give that money back to them. In 2018, when we filmed, our town was in a really big lull for any filmmaking happening in the area. And it kept everyone energized. I think it kept, it gave people opportunities for roles they haven't done before. And now they've moved on to like studio productions and are doing those roles. So I think we got that goal. And um, yes, number one is to raise autism awareness and acceptance in this film to get people talking about it and to just promote the message that there is no such thing as normal. And we are here to accept each other, but also accept ourselves. And then finally, for women in film, um, you know, uh, one of the reasons we set out to even write uh, female characters is because we are actors first and we audition for a lot of roles that we're very grateful to audition for but they're typically very small and they could be like dumb blonde or quirky waitress. And we're like, ah, oh, women are so much more than that. And so our hope is that people can see two female characters interacting um, that just are, have a family relationship and um, the complexities that come behind that. So those are, those were our hopes. Thanks for reading those. I yeah, clearly get jazzed about them. <laughs> oh, it was like, that, well, that's awesome with those, the goals that you have for this film. That was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's important. That's very important to have goals. Um, uh, I mean, other than that, I think you have given great advice throughout the whole, you know, talk right now, which is really what we want to do. And um, I think you, you couldn't have said it better that, you know, you were doing this for yourself, obviously, but also people get opportunities because they do a project. You know, like not a lot of times, uh, you know, people uh, are just doing something and then that's it because something there's always someone watching. Right. I, I always say that there's always someone, you know, looking at your stuff and then seeing what's out there. And it's great that you're actors or maybe someone got a, you know, a production somewhere uh, out of that. And I think that's the most uh, rewarding experience that you can get as a filmmaker to really see somebody in your film making it as well uh, for it. Um, so, uh, we're going to do a little plug, uh, how do we find your film, right? So, um, and, uh, I'll put it on the, on the, on the comments after, uh, the link, uh, but go ahead. Yeah. So you can find drought on Amazon prime. Mm -hmm. Um, this week, actually we're, we're running a special where you can rent for $4.99 and purchase for $9.99. Um, but then at the end of this week, it'll go back up to its normal price. Oh, um, so you just buy it then, right? You know? Yes. Yeah. Why not? And if you like it, it would mean so much if you guys rated it and, and wrote a review. I'm um, an honest review. You know, that's really important to us. So, um, yeah, Amazon Prime. Okay. Watch okay. it. All right. So I, this is, I promise this is the last question. Okay. Uh, so this is just, if you were to tell yourself before you even started this project, uh, what one thing that you would have done differently, maybe just, or you would have told yourself before you got this project going like that, maybe, yeah, maybe could have gone different, a different way. Well, you know, I feel like, oh, sorry, Megs, did no, you? No, you go first. I was thinking you go first. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like everything was supposed to happen the way it was. So I wouldn't change anything because I learned so much. The learning curve on this project was huge because every single role that Megan and I stepped into was new. Um, but I will say if I could go back and tell myself something that I'll continue to tell myself 
for the next projects that we do. I really struggled on set and only Megan really knows this um, as a director because I felt like I was completely underqualified, which I was and still am, but I felt like I needed to know everything, um, especially technical stuff, which I was not familiar with at all. And so I really got in my head when I was in director mode that I just was so inadequate and it made, it was just really unhealthy, right. uh, unhealthy thoughts, you know, of like, I'm not good enough or like, no one's going to listen to me, all that stuff. It was such a waste of time. Um, and so what, maybe I don't know all the answers, but that's why you have a team. So I think I would go back and tell myself, just chill, just Trust your gut, know that other people are working just as hard. Um, you don't have to know the answers and that's why you have all these great people with you. Um, so yeah, I think that's maybe something that I go back and tell myself and tell others. You don't have to know everything. Just take it one step at a time. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, you know, it's gonna sound cheesy because mine is about the same, I would think. In my mode, though, if I don't know something, I try to learn everything I can about it. Um, and sometimes you just don't have the capacity. I, I don't need to know everything that the gaffer is doing. I, as I do more or, or sound or the first AC or DIT, you know, I wanted to know what everyone was doing. I think that comes from a good place. And I think what Hannah's talking about comes from a place of wanting to be a good team, team member. But being a good team member is sometimes releasing responsibility and letting people do what they're there to do. And as we do more projects or as you do more projects out there, you'll learn more and more each time. And you'll feel, I think, more uh, like you have more knowledge of everything going on. But it's okay if you don't. That's perfect. I, th I yeah. think that's perfect, right, Desiree? I mean... Pretty yeah. much what we've been saying, and we're going to keep saying it, and uh, we're going to try to do these uh, little segments as much as we can, find uh, filmmakers that are doing great things in this area and outside this area, because I think we're all connected anyway, so maybe yeah. one uh, maybe one day we'll get to work on a project together, and you know, you yeah, know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> exactly. But uh, ladies, we wish we wish you the best and uh, the best of luck on your future. And uh, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty good one. I mean, you yeah. you have a, a great movie that I think is gonna inspire uh, not only filmmakers but just anyone you know looking to um, just be creative. You know, as far as that. But uh, I'm gonna leave everyone with the trailer just one more time so you can see, and then just where where you can find it. So if you just want to stay here, um, I don't think we have any questions right now, but I'm sure others will pop up and then we'll put them on the comments. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you thank again you. for joining us. Um, yeah, thank you guys. You gr girls take care. Thank you. Let's go. Okay. No. West. west. Northwest. No. Just regular West. Let's okay, go. Regular West. I'm sitting down. Let's go. Are you coming too? Yeah, man, for sure. Okay. Where are we going? Okay, pay attention. Cool. Mom's in jail. Gangster. Carl was fired. Oh, large man. We're chasing the storm. Cool. Don't tell Lillian. Wait, wait. Lillian is like here. Lewis? So we're going to chase a storm. You have no idea what you're doing. I have a plan. Oh, so we're just gonna follow Carl's plan. Yeah, we yeah. are. Oh, well, while well, you film everything, this is ridiculous. What are you guys, like storm chasers or something? Yes, and we're gonna be late if we don't get back on the road. Why'd you come back? Take care of Sam and Carl, really. I can't find Carl. Let me show you we are here. Well, I don't know where we are, but my bet is that Carl is right. Give me you have to get them for me first. Well, it's normal for families be worried about each other. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe not this much. Carl! Look at me in the eye when you talk to me, son. The only people who don't look you in the eye when you're talking? Criminals? Psychopath. You do not care about the storm. All you do is control me. Control you? All I do is try and make you happy. Oh, 
hope you uh, find what you're looking for.